Hello, Ken Spriggs here. Uh, starting a, um, a new 3D printed build of um, this little guy here. This is uh, Queel from The Mandalorian from Disney riding a Blurg. It's the name of this little weird creature. Uh, Queel's a cool little guy. Uh, he helps out the Mandalorian in the first, uh, well, he, he meets him in the first episode, but he's, he stays throughout the season. Um, but the first time we see him, he's rescuing uh, Mando from being attacked by a Blurg uh, as soon as he lands on this desert planet. Um, and uh, he has his, um, he decides to help him out and help him uh, go and find where the asset or the child is, is being held by mercenaries so he can rid his, um, his area of all the, uh, the bounty hunters and people trying to come and get him. And he has faith in, in uh, the Mandalorian because he's never met a Mandalorian, but he's heard good things about them that he should be able to make quick work of it. So, um, so I'll be working on this print. This is a three pr a free print from Thingiverse. And, um, I have a few ideas for it and what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, but let's go ahead and, um, and take a look at this figure. I have spoken. All right, so this is my latest 3D printed part that I'm working on. And uh, it is from The Mandalorian. And this figure's name is Queel. He's a cool little guy. Uh, vo voiced by Nick Nolte in the, uh, in the series. And he's riding this creature called a Blurg. Uh, Mandalorian gets attacked by a Blurg as soon as he lands on this planet in the first episode looking for the child. So, uh, and then uh, Quill comes out and helps him out and becomes his friend. Um, and his famous saying, uh, which he says a lot, is, I have spoken. So he'll say something that he's going to do and just end it with, I have spoken. So it's like, that's it. I've said it. Don't question me. Um, so this is a really nice figure. Uh, this is all one piece. The, um, the print file comes with a couple versions. You have this here, which is all one piece. You have the Blurg with his saddle and reins without Quill, and you have just the Blurg without anything on him. Uh, I wish they had made Quill separate. That would have been nice too, been a little easier to print, but he turned out really well. Uh, the only thing I had to really worry about as far as printing it, I had to do it a couple times, are his top teeth, which are all messed up anyway. But um, I had to really support those or there weren't any teeth at all. And also this little piece here, you can barely see it, but it broke off. Every, every one of these that I printed, it broke off. It's just so fragile right there, but not a big deal. I just super glued it back on again with some CA glue. Um, so he's pretty cool. He's a nice little figure. He's about four inches by four inches tall. And uh, I just want to put him on a little desert, uh, little desert diorama. I have a few ideas that I'm throwing around, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. So, all right, but he's pretty cool. Uh, the Blurg has some really nice detail on him with his reins his teeth and his big tongue. <laughs> Quill has some pretty good detail. Some of it would probably be more obvious if he were larger, but this, this is as big as I could make it in one piece on my printer. Another reason why if he had been in more than one part, that would have been easier to do. Especially the Blurg, if he were cut in half maybe, I could have certainly made him probably twice as big. But Quill's pretty cool. He's got his little gear on, his little goggles. It's a pretty decent detail on his face and his clothing. Pretty cool. His little boots. <laughs> All right. hard time balancing because his his right front little tiny uh, t-rex arm <laughs> isn't touching the ground just his two his two back legs and then that uh, 
his left front arm is touching. So he'll have to be glued in place for whatever diorama I do. But um, I printed him solid because it was easier to not worry about some supports or some drain holes, that kind of thing. So he's got some weight to him. Um, but definitely a really cool little figure. He was from Thingiverse, which has a lot of free things on it. So, um, so I can't complain about that. All right. So let me go ahead and uh, start working on some ideas on what I'm going to do with him. And then uh, eventually I'll be looking at a diorama. All right. All right, so I've decided to do um, a little bit more on my, um, my diorama with Quill and the Blurg. Uh, decided to go ahead and add a, uh, a second figure. Uh, and so I printed out a second Blurg, but one with just a saddle, not with Quill on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Mandalorian figure in scale. Uh, riding along with Quill on the Blurg to recreate the scene where they ride out to the desert and Quill is showing him where the um, the uh, the hideout is um, where the the child is being kept and um, and he tells him that um, all the others that have come his way all the other bounty hunters none of them have returned <laughs> and uh, and Mando says, well, I guess I shouldn't take your advice then. He's like, well, no, um, because uh, he's never met a Mandalorian, but he hears that they're pretty formidable. So that's why he decided to help him, because he really thinks that he's going to make short work of these um, of these other bounty hunters. And, um, and he has not yet met the child, and so he doesn't know, you know what he is. All he knows is um, it's his bounty, and he's over 50 years old and then he's going to get a nice reward for for getting him so all right so what i'm going to do is um what i've started doing is to um create a figure of the mandalorian so i'm going to use this one here no, i'm just kidding <laughs> this is my first print uh he's about six inches give or take of um of the mandalorian on the um the horn beast skull and um, I'm going to take the same file, and this is also, by the way, the file that I've been using to make my larger 18-inch Mando for my other diorama for my last video. Um, so what I want to do is scale it down. What I've started doing, actually, I keep saying I want to do it. I've, I've scaled him down to be a smaller size so he'll fit on the blurg here. Um, so he's roughly about 30% of the original file. This Mando was about 50%, give or take, maybe a little bigger than the file. Um, and then the one I'm making is a for the for the other diorama, the 18-inch one, is 160%. So much, much bigger. So uh, I went ahead and printed out some some parts here. Now. As you can see, his left leg is bent, which is perfect for sitting on the on the blurg, but his right leg is straight. Uh, same with his right arm. His right arm is bent up over his shoulder. I'd rather have it down like this. So what I did was um, his waist is just his hips, his belt. Sorry, got to focus here. Come on. focus okay so this side of it is the correct side as you can see from that larger figure so I took this and Cheetah Box has a feature where you can reverse a piece and do the opposite so I did that I reversed it and I printed two of them and then I cut pieces why are you not focusing oh, goodness I cut pieces from them. Here's some that are left over. Here's the straight leg. And so I cut pieces out in order to make two legs that are bent. And so that worked out fine. And then you can see he's gonna be able to sit on the, 
on the Blurg. And um, I had to do a little bit of adjusting. Zoom in on that a little bit. Because um, his left leg plating is different than his right leg plating. So I sanded off this one since I reversed it and I cut out the bigger one and glued it in place. Uh, also what I did was I, I sanded his knee smooth to take that part off of there. And then I have instead on this leg, this, this type of piece. So that's gonna go, here's his right leg. And there's his left leg. And then the same thing with the arm, as I said, I just mirrored them. So I have two arms that are coming down in the same direction. So I can do that, put them in. Here's his torso. So that goes on there. We have a nice seated version of Mando. All right, so that's working out pretty good. I have his helmet. These are just scraps left over. All right. I also did an initial print on his cape and his weapons. His cape didn't turn out well, as you can see. It's mostly intact, but for some reason there's a big gaping hole off to support it better. But I'm going to print that. I already fitted it a bit. It's going to work out pretty well. When it goes on to him, it's going to be hanging over hanging out a bit over top. Uh, I might have to bend it a little bit. And the nice thing is too, whenever, whenever it's first printed, it's pretty flexible and soft. So I can bend it to where I want it to be and then harden it with UV light so it stays in that position. Uh, and then I um, also printed his little pistol and its holster, it's gonna go on the side. And then I made his rifle. The rifle was tricky. Um, I actually printed, there's two versions of this. There is one where it's the entire rifle and has his hand on it. So I had to dremel that off. And then there's a version where it's cut in half. So I made both. And um, most of this one, this was the, the one piece. Most of it worked out except the tip didn't work out at all. So I was able to use it from one of the other ones and I had to work with the scope that didn't work out too well either and cut it off, but it turned out pretty good. This is just gonna be draped over his back and I'm gonna make some kind of a strap so it looks like it's just strapped around his chest and hanging over his back um, outside of his cape, obviously, so, okay. All right, so once I get these all fashioned, get him fashioned, ready to go, then I can start looking at painting them. And then I have a few ideas for a diorama that's going to mimic the, um, the big rocky desert, the big giant desert plateaus that they run over uh, in the Blurgs. Um, so let's go ahead and work on that. And um, I think this is going to be pretty cool. All right. All right, so I finished printing all the parts I need for the Mandalorian. I redid the cape because the first one, as I showed, didn't work out right. Um, and this one worked out great. What I did, though, is while it was still flexible, uh, because once, once these parts come out, you have to clean them and then put them under a UV light in order to harden them. Uh, and it definitely, you can tell the difference when they're hardened. But before they're hardened, if they're thin enough, they're flexible and you can bend them around. So what I did was I took the cape and I put it onto him on the figure and then I bent it in a little bit and curved it 
so it would better fit. And you can see the difference between, this is the print hardened the way it normally comes out. You can see it's a lot wider and I curved it in more to be around his body. And I'll put it on here in a moment and show you how that's gonna look. Um, but this one turned out a lot better. It did get a little hole in it here and there, but I actually like that. And I put a few more holes in it to make it look more realistic because it's a pretty shoddy, torn up cape that he's wearing. But it's pretty cool. It's gonna work out really well. Um, I also printed the rifle again, and I printed the entire thing. And it turned out well other than the tip, which is just so fine at the focus. Um, and just like the other one that I made, I did have an extra one of these from another print, so I just glued it on and it worked out good. But I've decided to change what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna have this over his back because it's gonna look awkward over the cape, which is still flowing out a bit. So I kept the hand on it. And what I'm going to do is I cut the hand off of this arm and I'm just going to have the, um, once I get everything painted and ready to go, I'm just going to have this glued on like this. He's just going to be holding it out in front of him. So I think that'll be pretty cool. So his right hand will look a little more natural. I don't have to worry about trying to do some kind of rain or something which wouldn't look right. His uh, left arm is going to be down and holding on to the um, this part right here. So he's going to look pretty cool on there. And um, I did a little a little bit of epoxy sculpt. Um, his his right shoe was just smooth and flat and had two two square keys in it to go on to the base for the larger version. So, and it didn't have any tread like the right one does. Just a little bit. So I filled in those two squares with epoxy sculpt. And then I used a toothpick to, um, what focus? To put a little bit of tread on it. And it'll look more natural once I get it painted. I also filled in that gap there. <laughs> where um, I glued the two parts together. You're not really gonna see it the way it's sitting on there, but I didn't want this open hole because you could kind of see it there. So that's posted, as, or that's been filled in as well. All right, so those are pretty much dry, a little bit longer on it. And then I'll be ready to, um, to put on a first coat of uh, Tamiya Fine Surface Primer, which is one of my favorites. Doesn't really obscure any of the detailing but it, uh, it covers it nicely, and then it shows any areas where you need to patch it up and fix it before you start doing some painting. So um, let me go ahead and put him onto, um, onto the Blurg and just kind of show you how he's gonna look. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, there we go. So I had to balance him on my screw cutters because it tends to wanna fall over on the right side since that little claw is up in the air. Um, but uh, there he is sitting on it. And then like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have his arm with the rifle, his hand with the rifle glued on like this. So that'll be pretty cool. He wouldn't really be riding and holding it out, but you never know. It just looks like a better pose, I think, than trying to drape it over that cape, which is still flowing out a bit. But you can see that the cape is nice. It comes down, flows naturally over the blurg and over his back. It's pretty cool. And you have his left arm holding on to the, the rein there of the saddle. And of course there's Queel riding his. All right, so that's gonna be pretty cool. So um, I'm gonna have his cape painted separately in his helmet, the helmet I'm gonna do Al Clavs on, and his shoulder, which at this point is already the shiny um, Beskar. So I'm gonna do those two in, in the Al Clad. 
um, and then I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do his right arm separately before I glue it in place. It'll just be easier to paint. And then the figure himself, I'm gonna paint separately before I put him onto the blurg and paint the blurg separately. Also his little side arm, um, it actually came back off, which is fine. Before I glue it back on, I'm gonna paint it since it'll be easier to do separate and then glue that onto his right side there. Uh, Quill, unfortunately, is, is one piece, so he's just gonna to have to be painted separately while he's on the blur. Um, but I wanna do as much as I can. Oh, and the rifle, of course, I'm gonna paint this separately. This is gonna have a lot of different colors on it before I glue that hand onto the end of his wrist. Uh, and then when it's all done, I'll just glue him onto the blurg, of course, and get him ready for the diorama. So coming along fantastically. Uh, I think this is gonna be a really cool diorama. And um, I'm already working on some ideas for the, um, the base that they're gonna be on to display them. I just have to make sure it's fairly solid because I have to glue these down with some 500 epoxy since they're prone to fall over. I don't want that happening, so. All right, so uh, really um, liking this, this uh, file that's here and I'm glad I could adapt it and have the Mandalorian along with Quill riding their blurgs. All right, so I primed all of the parts for the Blurgs and the Mandalorian parts using some uh, Tamiya Fine Surface Primer Gray, which is really awesome stuff. It doesn't cover up any of the detail. It really shows the slightest, slightest blemishes. Uh, it even showed, which I didn't notice at first. Let's see if I can show it. You can see a line going across his helmet on the top, which I tried to cover up a bit. Looks kind of rough though, so I'm pre reprinting this. But it shows every little every little blemish, which is good because then you can figure out what you need to do, what you need to patch. Um, but also, it doesn't doesn't cover up any of the detail, which is great. Uh, and then I went ahead and. Um, Started with a dark gray. These are all Tamiya, um, Tamiya, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> whichever, uh, Tamiya um, acrylics. So I started with a dark gray from them. And then I went through and I put a neutral gray on the bottom for some highlighting and some other areas. And then I, um, I mixed in, um, took some white with a little bit of dark gray in it and misted that over as well. It's kind of hard to see the, the contrast here, but I want them to be somewhat subtle. And then I'll be using weathering, uh, using oils for weathering and weathering powders to finish these up. Plus, of course, I have to paint his mouth and his teeth and his eyes and his saddle and that kind of thing. So, all right. I also uh, got a coat of um, flat brown on his cape and on the main body parts. Which one did I use? No. All right, I'm not quite sure. I think it was this one here. I think it was this brown. JG SDF on his main parts. Um, there's some very subtle contrast between the browns on him as far as his pants and his boots, obviously his belts that are supposed to be leather, that kind of thing. And then the darker brown, which will be this one here on his chest plate and this, this uh, his right thigh plate. His left one is more of a, of a beige and so is part of his tunic as well so all right so now i'm starting to go back and i'm going to do some some uh using a brush to apply the other colors because of the small areas that they are so all right all right so i got quite a bit of painting done on 
uh, the Mandalorian figure. I'll show you that when I'm all completed. What I'm doing right now is um, in the first episode where they're they're riding the Blurgs through the desert, uh, he's already replaced his right shoulder pauldron. Sorry, I can't get a good focus on that. Um, with the new shiny Beskar one because he gets the down payment of the Beskar um, from the client in order to uh, go out and and find the child or the asset as they call him so his right shoulder is already a shiny beskar and of course his helmet is too so i taped off just his right shoulder and i have a, a gloss coat of the black from outclad because i'm going to use the outclad stainless steel and i have um two helmets i printed four more helmets because as i showed the first one had a big line through it and it didn't turn out too well uh, I did four of them because I actually have two different helmet prints. I have the first one. These things are tiny. Here we go. I have um, this one, which came with, which was my first build of the Mandalorian, and most of the parts on him are from that print. Then I have a new print that I got recently. I don't know if you can see the difference, but this one has a little sharper profile of the helmet. And I'm kind of liking this one a little better. Sorry, I can't get that to focus. Focus. There we go. And so I did one of each just to kind of see which one I like. Uh, I also sprayed the front part of his rifle because I'm going to do an aluminum on that and some other metals on it as well. Um, so I'm going to let those dry and then I'll go ahead and get the outclads on that. And then at that point, I'm ready to go ahead and get him all put together and then look at doing some weathering with some oils and pastels on him, so, okay. All right, and there is my finished little teeny Mandalorian. All glued together. You can see the outclad stainless steel on his right shoulder pauldron and his helmet. Turned out pretty good. I showed masking off his visor to try to get that tiny little part. And I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, I painted it with some flat black and then I put some Tamiya smoke over top of it to make it clear. I think that looks pretty cool. I got his rifle all painted. Even the, the butt of it almost looks like some wood pattern. Looks kind of cool. It's kind of neat. I have some uh, outclad aluminum on the tip. Try to get that to focus. Otherwise, I just used uh, Tamiya paints for the rest of them. The cake turned out nicely. Got his little uh, blaster in his holster on his side. Yeah, I think he turned out great. I like the painting I did on him better than the larger six inch figure that I did. This one is more accurate. Uh, still just a slight inaccuracies in some of his outfit, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. But he looks fantastic. All right, let me go ahead and get him on to his blurg, and I'll show you how that's going to look. All right, there we go. So you can see that his uh, his left hand is holding on to the uh, the rein, one of the reins for the for the saddle. His right arm is holding his rifle. His cape fits nicely over the back, so it's not uh, it's not a problem. And once I get him down further, it'll snug down a little bit more. It's a pretty cool little pose for him. Now he won't be glued onto his blurg until I'm finishing with the blurg weathering and finishing the painting. As you can see, I um, did some of the red in the mouth, which looks kind of sloppy right now, but 
Um, I still have to do a lot more with that and also obviously paint his teeth and make them look kind of yellowish and lighten up his skin somewhat, do his eye, paint the saddle and the reins. So quite a bit of work still to do um, to, finish, to finish this up. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, show you Quill as well. All right, so I haven't done any painting on Quill just yet, but I have started the painting on his Blurg and also did some of the mouth and the teeth. I had to do those first because it's really hard to get in there. And I wanted to get the red inside of his mouth before I started working on his like, gums and the rest of it. So a lot of that I have to touch up and, and blend in. So, all right. So I definitely have to do a lot more work on the blurgs and obviously paint Queel. I'm gonna to wait to paint him until I finish figuring out how I'm gonna weather and lighten the blurgs and then I'll go from there. Cause he can't be removed, he's solid with the blurg, which makes him a little harder to paint than Mando. All right, so uh, these are coming along really well. Really liking how these are turning out. And then like I said, I'm working on some ideas with, the, um, with my desert diorama as well. Okay. All right, so that's going to wrap up uh, this first part of my build for uh, Quill and Mando riding their blurgs. Uh, a lot of good work done on these figures. I really like how they're turning out. Uh, I'm glad I came up with the idea to, to miniaturize a version of the Mandalorian as well, to have him riding on this um, on his blurg as well. Uh, so uh, stay tuned, I will be working more on this and uh, also I'll be continuing in the background working on my larger 18 inch Mando, which um, takes a lot more work obviously to, to come about, but uh, working on both of these projects here simultaneously. So, all right, um, hoping to get this one done by um, the deadline to put on to WantaFest which is at the end of March, May, not March, <laughs> the end of this month, May, um, and uh, entering that along with several of my other kits that I already have completed or bills that I already have completed. So, so definitely check that out. Um, I had mentioned it and shown a video for that earlier. Uh, it is um, an online version from uh, similar to Wonderfest, and also all the proceeds go towards Wonderfest to help them offset uh, the cost that they incurred in having to move the festival to October. So, all right. Um, so check that out and um, I will see everybody next time. Thank you.